Hello Internet, says Skorkowski, and one of the common complaints that players or game masters have is dealing with that one player who can't wait for someone else to finish talking, and they just, are we going to get to the skit now, and what game should it look like we're playing? I set it up for Pulp and Cthulhu, but I wasn't really sure if that's what we wanted to start with. Blurt out an interruption, and this can be maddening. In fact, if you were one of my players and you're thinking to yourself, I wonder if he's talking about me. Yes, I am. And if you're one of my players and you're thinking, he's definitely not talking about me, yes, I definitely am talking about you. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Players who blurt out interruptions, ways they do it, reasons for it, and ways to help stop it. Now, one point that I have said in a ton of videos, and I'm probably going to say in a ton more videos, is gaming is a group effort. We might have three or five or eight players in addition to a game master, so to keep everything running smoothly, everyone needs to share the floor, not hog the spotlight, not steamroll over anyone else, and give everyone around the table a good chance to play. Now, some players, and I am including Game Masters here, might come in with the notion that it is all about them, that they're the star and no one else really matters. So they really don't think twice about speaking over another player because, well, I guess they don't matter to them. Now, these types of players, the fact that they're interrupting everyone else, that is merely the symptom of a much larger issue. And players who refuse to stop the single-player mindset even after it's been brought to their attention, eh, those players have a tendency not to last very long. But what I want to talk about is good players who don't mean to steamroll over other players or the game masters, but get so caught up in their excitement or they miss the cues that they don't wait their turn to talk, but then feel bad, but they still just keep doing it. Now, one possible reason for this is the player is distracted. They aren't paying attention to what's happening in the game at that moment, and they hadn't realized that somebody else was talking. Now, sometimes their interruption may or may not have anything to do with the game at all. You open up the storage unit door to see a maze work of boxes. The air is cool and smells of rat droppings. On the dusty floor before you is a set of bare footprints leading deeper inside. Drawing my flashlight, I'm going to... Guys, have you seen the trailer for the new Nick Cage movie? This is just so insufferably rude. The player clearly isn't paying attention to the game, and even if you have that player who's, you know, listening and paying attention to what's going on, they clearly aren't listening and paying attention to what's going on, otherwise we wouldn't be talking about this right now. A player who is obviously doing something else in the game can be distracting to the other players because, you know, everyone around the table, they can see the fact that this other player isn't paying attention to what's going on and they're doing something else, and this even counts if you're doing it as an online game because you can clearly see that that other player is engaged with something else. It's you know even worse if they're wearing glasses and you can actually see the different windows popping up as a reflection. And that just sends bad signals to the entire table that not everybody is paying attention. So it is up to players to limit their own distractions. Just resist the urge to open up that other browser window or pick up your phone. And it's up to them not to disrupt the game with whatever their distraction is. It's not up to the game master to police the players to make sure they're not distracted, it's up to the players, and I'm talking about the whole table, to police each other and to police themselves to make sure that we're not having any distractions. Other times the players are not distracted with their phones or whatnot, they just simply aren't paying attention to what's going on around the table and they just blast out whatever interruption crosses their mind, even if it's something that we've already covered. As you draw closer to the derelict starship, you can see that it has no power. Hmm. I'm going to launch some probe drones out, see if we can get better look at this thing. Your drones notice several blast marks on the backside near the engines, and the damage is very precise. Now, it looks like it might have been done with particle beams. Damn, I bet it was those Omicrons. We should launch some drones to see if there's been any damage done to that ship. Dude, we just covered that. Oh, well, uh, never mind. Now that's a case where the player was paying attention to the game, but not paying attention to the table. They were deeply focused on whatever it was that the game master said, but you know, then they got caught up so much thinking about whatever that was, and they're trying to problem solve that, that they simply zoned out. And then they missed everything that happened after that moment, which leads to a whole host of other problems beyond just the interruption that they give, you know, such as, you know, we're constantly having to slow the game down to repeat information, or the fact that that player then missed everything that the other player 
player said or did, and that might not have been repeated back to them, and you know now they're not really completely up to date on what's going on. Players, it's up to you to pay attention to the table. Now, if you zone out in your thoughts for a second, I get it. I am super guilty of that myself. But instead of just blurting out your thoughts the instant you resurface back to the present, you know, just pause and see what's going on in those moments since you zoned out. Now, another reason that players might interrupt something and blurt out some idea or question is simply because they're afraid that they might forget it if they wait. Mike, as you enter the tailor shop, a gray-haired halfling behind a table looks up from his stitching. How may I help you, sir? I show him that piece of red velvet, it tore off that bandit's cloak, and say, what can you tell me about this? His face pales when he sees it, and his shoulders slump back. I always knew today would... Hey, before I forget, can I get a horse while we're in town? And I want to see if they have any war horses here. What? Uh, yeah, man, hold on. Um, where, where were we? Which, again, I understand them worried about them forgetting and that they're blurted out because they don't want to forget what they're saying. I have ADHD. I get it. However, because I am an ADHD game master, it also kills me when players blurt out those interruptions, jarring out my train of thought of what's going on, because I then forget where I was before the interruption. Now, often players that got interrupted, you know, they also forget, you know, what it was that they were doing or what it was they meant to ask before the interruption, meaning that not all of the information in the game is getting imparted by the other players because we've got these interruptions and then we're forgetting where we were by the time we get back to it, which that leads to all sorts of frustrations and possible issues now because the players might not have gotten an important clue or they might not have mentioned some sort of equipment that they were going to pick up or something that they were going to do. So for you blurters out there, if you're worried you're going to forget something and that's why you have to blast out your thoughts now, interrupting everyone else's game, simply write a note to yourself so you won't forget. And then once it's appropriate, to say or ask whatever it is, you have it right there to remind you what it was you wanted to say. This is a little life hack that I have used for years, and that's why just about every panel that I do or every time I'm doing an interview, I have a little notepad beside me to jot down my thoughts. That way I don't speak over whoever is talking out of you know fear of forgetting what it was I wanted to say. And then when you know, once I have the chance to speak again and the microphone's been given back to me, I can look down at my notes and remember what it was that I wanted to say. Another common complaint when it comes to players blurting out their interruptions is when the game masters are trying to describe something, but they're getting cut off. Pushing open the great doors, you step into the chamber. How big is it? Hold on, the chamber is huge. Your torchlight can't even reach the far side of it. Thick pillars go stretching up into the darkness above. What do we see ahead of us? Hold on. At the edge of your torchlight, you can just make out the shape of a wide statue, and its body is glistening with gems all over its body. And I'm going to run up to that statue. Before you were two giant snakes. Dude, why didn't you tell us about those snakes before I moved? We should have seen those in front of us. Is this some sort of plot to murder our characters? Oh, I am going on the RPG horror stories with this one. Guys, I'm just trying to finish the description. This can happen when the players are excited, and that is great. I'm happy that the players are excited and invested. I mean, oh my god, we finally got it right. However, in their excitement, they cut off the Game Master every time the Game Master pauses to take a breath, and they're often asking questions that the Game Master was just about to answer before the Game Master got cut off. So now it takes five times longer for the GM to describe anything because they keep getting interrupted, and now they miss mentioning some key thing that the players, you know, won't shut up and just give them enough time to let them finish what it was that the Game Master needed to say. Guys, this one is my personal hell. Now, one incredibly simple trick that can help alleviate this and has actually been helping with my group some is something that I first read in Cult Divinity Lost, and that's when a Game Master is giving their descriptions and giving their setup end that with what do you do? This not only tells the players that you are done talking and now it's their turn now and they can do whatever they want, but it also gives the players a call to action. So it cuts down on those times when you finish some you know, dramatic setup and the players just kind of stare at you awkwardly and quietly. So that is one plus that it's giving them a call to action. But the other plus is hopefully once your players are in the habit of knowing that they should wait until you pass control over to them through the signal of what do you do, they should hopefully reduce their rampant cutting you off or blasting out questions or you know statements of whatever their action intentions are the first moment that the game master pauses to take a breath. Sort of like a radio conversation. I'm done speaking. It's your turn now. Over. 
As you make your way across the lot, something slams into the backs of those metal shutters, bending them outwards. Something slams into it again, and then they just go blasting open. The cyber psycho steps through his pistol raised. An articulated arm unfolds from his back, and there's a machine gun on the end, and it starts swiveling toward you. What do you do? Another common Game Master complaint is when players interrupt the big reveal or monologue with a sudden attack. The evil scientist turns towards you as you enter the room. You think killing me will stop my revenge? The company will pay for what they've done to us. Even now, hundreds of... I shoot him in the face. What? I shoot him in the face before he can attack us. <sighs> I spent all week practicing that monologue. Remember that the Game Master is a player as well, and while no, they shouldn't be taking the spotlight away from the other players, you know, they sometimes just want to have a moment to shine. Or maybe there was some critical piece of information that the bad guy was about to impart to the players before Murder McMurder Hobo opened up fire. The Alexandrian channel did a video offering a fantastic solution to this problem that is incredibly simple. The rundown goes like this. Step 1. The player characters burst into the room. The villain is there. Step 2. Call for an initiative order roll. Step 3. Begin the villain's monologue, or at least imparting the information that's important. Step 4. Finish the monologue. Step 5. Resolve actions in the initiative order. The idea is that the Game Master is acknowledging the player's action, and they're making the promise to the player that the players are going to make those actions. Of course, for this to work, it also requires that the Game Master not take too long, you know, hogging the spotlight, and, or allowing the bad guy have any sort of actions outside of that initiative order, but this is a very simple trick trick that allows the Game Master to have their you know, big moment or impart that what information they need to while still allowing the players to have that tactical advantage of acting first with a sudden attack. I stuck a link down below to his video in the description below. It is definitely worth checking out. Anyway, that is it. Pretty short video. I was originally writing this as my sequel of you know how to make great character video where I was going to be covering you know, tips for being a great player once you've got that great character. And that script was just becoming monstrously huge. Clear Really too much to put in a single video, so I was kind of going through it, and I saw the section about you know refraining from interrupting the other players or interrupting the game master, and, you know also the section about you know avoiding distractions and whatnot. I figured you know that's a good part I could pop out and expand and turn into its own dedicated video. So hopefully this will help some players and some game masters out there, or my own players, because seriously, guys. And if not, hopefully it was at least entertaining for you. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see some more of our stuff, such as game reviews or how to's, just hit that subscribe button. Till next time, amigos. Hey, Todd, have you checked out that new Thai restaurant yet? It is freaking awesome. What? No, but dude, I'm in the middle of the outro right now. And that's what it feels like.